I'm creating a document, literally a Idiots 101 of how to do this. I saw you in Boston, Max. I saw you walking in Boston last weekend. I was uh, in an Uber and I looked up at the last minute and I was like, I, rec I think you were like wearing that hat. I was like, I know the back of that head. You're pushing a baby uh, stroller in Beacon Hill area. Yeah. No, I live uh, I live on Newbury, so down up by Gloucester Street, so by the Pru. You're where Hancock? Yeah. Cool. Is this a new um, pop-up tent that we have here? I don't know. It looks pretty good. It's big. <laughs> it's very nice. Yes. Oh, uh, high-tech one, right? At some point, we can take some of the video, integrate, integrate some videos, and have some pictures, or whatever. Yeah, that, so we're like, like, phase N, you know? Yeah, that, that's a long one. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like, people really want to listen to old stuff. He's fairly entertaining. I thought we'd ask. That was a close game. I hear they're one and whatever, and it just seems like we've been rolling. So I've been promising, I've been promising Chicago, a Chicago game. We score early and often. How do you, are you supposed to be outside? I am, yeah. Okay, there you go. She's all about early and often. Normally about voting, but here's about say, I, gotta lose this. I thought you had to die to vote early enough. No, no, that's, that's <laughs> another joke. How do you know Elvis is really dead? He's registered to vote in Chicago. All right, All right, I'm going to go get paid. Give me here. Do you know how to set this up, Chris? Yes. Okay, good. Then I can, uh, if you can't figure it out, let me know. Cool. And you, and you guys got to remember, at the end of the season, the blue, the white wire, all that stuff should go back go in the back, office. Yeah. Okay. I suppose being out here all summer. Don't get it. Don't control your dogs. Don't get a leash on it. He's so excited. It's a rugby game without a dog. I saw you the other day. Sorry, I was on a conference call. <laughs> Yeah, those Asian markets. 
closing yeah. early and opening late. I mean, we're just, we're really just competing for big federal contracts. Hey, how are you? Very well. Thank you. Hey. Danger. Danger zone. Who you to us? He looks great as always. I see nothing. Yeah. Chuck? Yeah, I played Harvard really early, uh -huh. and I was out Thursday. Was really early. <laughs> Wait, did you take Friday off? No, I won't. Oh, you just worked for Mowley? Yeah. I wish I could do that. It was, yeah, I had like such a bad day. It was like 11, it like, we like came back at like 9, for sure. I don't know if you see it. I'm here for that. I feel like, I feel so much better, like, today. Yeah, and I'm like, I was out Thursday, like, yeah. for a while time. Like, so it'll be fine. I had Thursday was a blast. Yeah. How long have you been out here, man? Since Thursday, two weeks ago. Uh, You're on project up here? You're consulting in here? I'm, I'm actually, I'm doing business. How's, 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 how's the beach in Hanover? No, no, I, I worked a legitimate seven hours. What? Oh. Oh. What did you do? Library? Live, Starbucks, ant room. Ant room. You spent like half the time moving between locations. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. you know, you know, really? Mainly Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> That's to show that he's doing work. We got the ant man. <laughs> <laughs> Should we stand down <laughs> there? <laughs> Yeah, do you want to see the I'm sorry, but yeah, yeah, but like he's gonna be announcing it. Like, I'm gonna say, what's he gonna do? Oh, Pat, you're announcing it. Oh, Pat, you're announcing it. Um, not sure. <laughs> Boomer! It's been a long time. We have six people watching. Let's go. No, Dave has even started. You can tell on that? Wow. I want to watch streaming sometime. Is there an address? Yeah. So we send out the link. The, the, so we had trouble at the beginning of the season getting it working. It should be fixed from now on. Well, so we send out the link on either Facebook or Twitter. And then hopefully we should have it where we send it out to the online. Um, we're still streamlining the process. I, I don't Did you tell? Why weren't you put the link on the website? Uh, you might want to move the camera a little bit. It's just like a, it, we could do. It. We should. It's, it's easier oh, than to post stuff on Twitter while they're out yeah. here because because it's hard to get the link like a week before. We don't have like a uh, like a like a URL like a standard URL that we use. Like, it's a new one. Although right we are taking donations for <laughs> websites, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's homecoming week, you gotta ask. Okay, where's the Oh, uh, yeah, where you go? Uh, Tell him Christopher for dogs. <laughs> you doing color? No? I hope so. Just the facts, straight facts, none of the facts. All right. I'm just so happy. Okay, the mic one might change. So, right here, this is a point downwards. There you go, boys! Let's go, guys! Let's go, fellas! Three. What's up? Is there a way I get this oh, point downwards so I can get the sideline? Or uh, I'm the kickoff, boys! That's, the thing. that's why we started holding it instead of doing this. You gotta like tip the type, uh, tripod line when they get out there. Yo. That's awful. It's a little bit of an art form. I'd really rather just do it by hand. Yeah, I, I, but I can't like, I don't know. That'd be weird. Chris, Chris, check in my lock. Normally we go through the camera. Yeah, we need to step down to a little 3.5. Yeah, I just don't know. Wait, can you also grab from James's desk the uh, charger?
Mason, you're on that? Yeah, I guess. All right. Um, just make sure it's recording. Yeah. And then zoom with that over zoom. All right. Okay. So we want to see who's the rocks, we want to see who's the rocks, but we don't want to just purely focus on that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we want the happy the screen, Make sure you don't miss any action. Okay. I'll show him. Huh? I'll show him. Yeah, but a little more zoom than your last time. I was only in it for the first like 10 minutes. Whoever was it was me. That was him, okay. A little more zoom than you're This guy. Goes to the camera. Goes to the camera. So that's from, and this thing goes like this. Are we streaming to this one? Uh, we're about to. Hope so. Press record. Let's do the first one this fall. Right? Second one. Second one? The first one went on. Which was the first uh, one? That was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my fault. I kind of forgot to put in the thing that transfers the screen from like here to online. So it was streaming. It just wasn't streaming a photo. This is like AV a first year in out. I think five AV. years I haven't hosted the rugby team down in Prince. Well, we played them up here and... Well, they had the Ivy 7s so like three yeah, years yeah. running in Prince. And the 15s were down last year. Yeah. Who's playing? 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 Let's go, guys! <laughs> this should be about set, Boomer. Testing one, two, testing one, two. <laughs> Testing one, two. Testing, testing, testing. Jesus. That's not a knee. Knees don't hurt that bad. That's a shin bone. Phones are in. Main ones. Tape in. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Ben's out there, right? You're good to go. Owen, good to go. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Both mics are hot. You got to go. Hey, thanks. Sorry. You're good to go? It's, it's, you're hot. Oh, we, we, we should be selfish. Thank you. Bye. Good afternoon from a rainy Hanover, New Hampshire. Uh, my name is Owen Scannell, and I'm pleased to bring you Dartmouth Rugby uh, Homecoming Weekend Edition versus Cornell. Um, sorry for a little bit of the delay here, but we are one minute and 45 seconds into the action. There is a injured Cornell player down on the field, um, and so we will work to bring you lineups as soon as we have them. Okay. okay. All right, so we have our lineups now um, for Cornell. Um, the starters are Matt Razor at 
prop alongside Zach Tetler. Ethan Vinos is the hooker with Cole, Cole Thiens and Tom Bjorn at locking up. Flankers Will Knudsen and Spencer Nagel and the eight man is John Schuler. Moving to the backs we have Grant Wenzinger at nine with Otto Goodwin fly halfing the team. Dan Kaplan and uh, Nick Jadema are the wings. Ryan ha uh, Haverland and Eddie Hogan are the centers. And Royo Iniko is the fullback. As far as the uh, the Dartmouth Big Green are concerned, um, our starting lineup is Paul Goodmanson and Krieg Greco at the uh, prop. Gordon Driscoll is the hooker. Stephen Hinshaw, Struan Coleman are the locks. Fuller Winton, Benji Hannum's Benji Hannum are flanking, and Hayden Aldridge, the captain, is at eight. Ollie Angerhart will be the scrum half. Pat Sheehy is the fly half. Luke Beanstock and Julian Johnson are the wings. Jack Badenhausen and Dawit Warkey will be in the centers, and Max Parker will be the full half. Or full, full back, sorry. <laughs> No. So we're looking like we're going to get back underway here um, as a Cornell player. Looks like he's got a real bad ankle injury. He's coming off the field. Um, he's been replaced by... It's going to be necessary for the football game. Uh, 22. Number 22, Patrick Schultz from Cornell. So it'll be a penalty to Cornell uh, as we resume play here. And it's a great kick from the fly half on Cornell. It'll be Cornell ball inside the 22 attacking line out going in. Anyone want to do color? <laughs> I really could use a good color. Or? No, 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 no. no. It's really, this feels like high pressure right now. But it's very, you just got to talk. <laughs> it's, it's hard doing the entire thing. So here comes the line out. Aldridge goes up and steals it. Big steal. Engelhart finds uh, Hannum. Hannum who takes it into contact. Big Green have an op major overlap left. And a good kick for clearance from uh, Pat Sheehy. So the Big Green avoid uh, conceding any points deep in their own zone. It's good line out still from Hayden Aldridge and a great uh, kick from Sheehy to get out of out of trouble. Score is still 0-0. We're three minutes in. Can you, I could find a can you scour the coach's office for that charger. So <laughs> it's unclear what this new uh, this new short strategy is here. I don't know if they're making the shorts too loose, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Big Green will look to defend this line out. Cornell goes back tower. <laughs> but swatted out of the air by Driscoll. Moved back to Cornell. Still still Cornell ball though. And they'll look to go to their left. <laughs> Prop Raisner is met at the line for no gain. Big Green defense is staunch here. Comes out to the fly half. Center. Oh, and he drops the ball. So that'll be a scrum to the Big Green. Beautiful day for rugby. Rio, real hardy weather. Better, real yeah, better appreciate our yeah. uh, uh, rain is really coming down here. Um, it's the kind of day that makes you appreciate the superlative drainage features on Brophy Field. <laughs> no real puddles or mud forming due to the pristine uh, landscaping and design of this field. Aldridge picks it up, goes out of the back of the scrum. A little bit of a messy messy endeavor, but spills it wide. Uh, 
Big line break from Jack Bad. Jack Bad. Ba uh, Badenhausen. 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 Little brother of Peter Badenhausen. Little brother of Peter Badenhausen, who I <laughs> honestly I didn't know him either. But <laughs> um, and the ball squirts free in the in the ruck, but it, it comes out again. A little bit of broken play here as the Big Green look to set a platform and continue their attack going forward. Ball is lost again. Very confusing run of play. Both teams trying to find their footing here on a wet and slippery day. As Cornell runs it to the substitute, uh, Patrick Schultz. Good, se good sequence of defending by the Big Green. Knock on, and it'll be a scrum to the Big Green. Green looks stout in defense. Um, have yet to capitalize on any of the opportunities, though, to turn that into points as the score is still 0 0. So as the forwards get set, Engelhart will put in. The team is lined up with the backs to the left side. Pat Sheehy straight back with Julian Johnson to the right. Blindside attack from the green. Inside the opposing 10. Good platform set. Engelhart distributes. Finds a pot of forwards in the middle of the field. She he's still working with Worky set to the opposite side. Kick forward. Uh, Can Johnson get it? Yes. Just short, but oh, a knock on. Wow, a on a wet day. It's every every catch has to be looked into the hands, and unfortunately, Cornell did not do that there, so it'll be a scrum to the big green. Uh, very dangerous attacking scrum just outside the five meter line. Yeah, check the computer, make sure there's no water. There you go. It's like 10 seconds behind that. Apologies if the audio feed is ahead of the um, the video. Is that is it actually the head or I don't know. Okay, you can use some help here. <laughs> it's nice when you explain it all, Owen. <laughs> so it'll be an attacking scrum for Dartmouth. Just outside the five meter line. The backs are lined up left. With Julian jo Julian Johnson lined up to the right. A lot of space. We'll see which way they go. So the ball's put in. Here comes Max Parker. Oh, it takes it into contact and knocks it forward. So it'll be a scrum for Cornell. Good, good aggressive attacking opportunity for Cornell. Or sorry, for for uh, for Dartmouth. Um, but unfortunately, the tackling for the I guess big red um, was you know was able to keep the big green off the scoreboard. So Cornell will have the put in. Um, scrum half, Grant Wenzinger. We'll put him with Ali Engelhardt defending, um, and they'll look to kind of exit their, uh, their defensive zone. So the ball goes in. Aggressive push from the green. Ball comes out, and the kick is blocked. Oh, and... That's a try. Looks like it was number number f uh, five. Stephen Hinshaw will give it to him. <laughs> um, yeah, kick blocks for the fly half, and the Big Green were able to put downward pressure on the ball in the try zone, which is enough to put them up five nothing with 9:30 gone by in the first half. Who scored that? Which is weird. I thought it was We're giving it to Hinshaw. Well, who, well unless you tell me otherwise. I thought it was she. Raffle. What? I'll give it to she. They're, they're like, 
Apologies, I've been corrected in the booth. It is Pat Sheehy, the fly half, who was able to capitalize on that mistake by Cornell. So Pat Sheehy, the fly half, with the try. And so Dawit Warkey slotting in at an unusual position at outside center here will attempt the conversion in the 13 jersey. <laughs> From what I've been told, he runs a great crash line. <laughs> Kick is up. A little ping pong off the post, and Morky's conversion is good. 7 0 green, 10 minutes gone by in the first half. His daughter is a senior. Yeah. So, Ryu Iniko, Inik, Inkyo, the Cornell uh, fullback, will take the restart. And the green quickly exit their zone. Ball goes backwards. Oh, that's a knock. That's a knock. Surprising that the ref did not call a knock there, but. Good tackle from Ollie Engelhart. But a penalty for hands in the ruck for not releasing the tackled player on Benji Hannum as Cornell looks to go quickly. And that is certainly a clean poach as the Green take over possession here. Here goes Hinshaw. Takes it into contact. Platform is set. Green secure the ruck. Hannum will look to go left. Find Sheehy. Sheehy takes a kick. Will it pop in bounds? Oh, a fantastic kick. Fantastic kick by uh, Pat Sheehy, the fly half. Puts it just a meter in bounds and then as it trickles out. And so Cornell will have to deal with a lot of pressure here as they look to escape their own zone. I wouldn't think though. I should create bonus So a deep defensive line out for Cornell. Ethan Venosa, the hooker, will throw in. Still un unclear why the the short the hike shorts play is coming. It's a real fashion. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's unclear. But they go back tower. Find find their scrum half, who who kicks slightly through, but doesn't really relieve the pressure here as Engelhart yeah. finds Max Parker who finds Warky who can step brought down left side just outside the 22 the green set and they'll look to go for a kick and chase it's two on none touched just by the Cornell and kicked out of bounds so that'll be a big green line out Aldridge looks to go quick finds uh, Stephen Stephen Hinshaw who will go quick they're inside the five a lot of pressure by the green here. Who look to move it. They have numbers wide if they can use them. Worky, oh, Worky. Hannah picks it up. Looks wide, oh, and it's a forward pass. Big green will rue that opportunity as they had numbers wide. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Nice to see you. Good job. So Dal Whitworky, a man with more maneuvers than most, took it took it himself when you know maybe there were a little more options wide, but you know I think that's one of the you know the errors that you make sometimes when you are are very good at making those those moves so not the worst thing that could have uh, happened for the green as they still have Cornell under a lot of pressure and Cornell has actually had a lot of trouble today trying to exit their zone so including the the one the lone try of the day came off of a, uh, a Cornell line out that was ultimately blocked in uh, touchdown so the green can't be too unhappy with you know where the the ball is being played today 
And a great push by the green here. They'll kick. And really no sort of territorial gain for Cornell as the green will now get a line out. Uh, inside, they're attacking 22. And so it'll be interesting to see what they come out with. <laughs> Wing Julian Johnson is lining up aggressively with the uh, expectation of maybe receiving a forward kick. Uh, it will be Green have a full set on the line out. They'll go and they'll look to Maul here. <laughs> And they will. They'll push forward. It's clear that ball comes down. Cornell men is over it. Ball is out. They'll come back to Sheehy. So close on the half of uh, uh, Jack Badenhausen. Yeah. Peter Basinhausen's brother. <laughs> and it's a try for the big green as uh, huh. Hayden. Hayden. Hayden Aldridge. Captain Hayden Aldridge scores. Bad. Bad. Bad in housing? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there are, there, are, there are friends and family in the booth here that have uh, corrected me on the, the pronunciation of Badenhausen. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the Green take a 12-0 to zero advantage after Captain Hayden Aldridge scores under the posts despite a somewhat messy ball. And so Worky will have a chip shot conversion. You know, despite some, you know, a little bit of, you know, carelessness or you know, some sort of broken play, I think strategically the Big Green have done a great job of keeping the ball in, you know, their attacking end and making sure that any sort of errors are capitalized on, you know, given the the wet conditions. <laughs> And Worky converts, despite uh, an aggressive chase by Cornell. So it'll be 14 nothing, 16, 59, 17 on the clock uh, as Dartmouth takes an advantage over Cornell. For us, because then we're into pre finals and finals. But there's still two more Ivy weekends. But we hope we'll be undefeated and we're not. <laughs> I'm glad to hear from our loyal viewers that the audio is on the money, lined up with the, uh, the video feed. So the technical investment that the DRFC has made into their audiovisual uh, broadcasting has, has not been in vain. Uh, the restart from Cornell by uh, fullback Rio Inco Inkyo doesn't go the requisite 10 meters, so it'll be a scrum to Dartmouth at midfield. Um, this is the, definitely a very dangerous attacking opportunity given the fact that Cornell has to put most of their men to the left to line up with the big green. Um, whereas Julian Johnson, who has been um, you know, off the score sheet today, but is perpetually been lurking for an opportunity as they come to the blind side. Both wings lined up. It's Luke Beanstock. Makes a really aggressive aggressive move and a great gain. And the ref blows a penalty for not rolling away. Cornell players just thought they could lie there and pretend like everything was okay, but that is not within the laws. So it'll be a penalty to the green as Worky will try and pin Cornell deep. And he finds touch, so the big green will have a attacking line out just 10 meters out from the line. Um, and they'll look to capitalize and put some breathing room between them and their opponents from Ithaca. Line out to Aldridge, comes down, straight off the top. Finds the flanker, oh. Good cleanup though by, by Fuller Winton. As he's brought down, Engelhart. Finds Coleman. Good aggressive push from 
from Foy Winton who scores the DRC try. <laughs> Great series of phase play coming off the line out, scoring third phase. Uh, score is now 19 to 0 pending the conversion. 20 minutes gone by. And so a change of kicker here. Looks like Dalit was done with scoring points or maybe you know letting the letting the fly half get a couple couple shots which was always appreciated to get his name you know at least <laughs> back in the day always great to get your name on the score sheet despite the uh, the score line so Pat Sheehy will take the conversion from between the 15 and the 5 meter line on the left side definitely a difficult conversion we'll see if he can convert Kick us up. Slotted straight through. Ball a little heavy. Almost certainly. Yeah, it's kind of hurt. Yeah, definitely a wet ball is not a kicker's best friend. But nonetheless, Pat Shee, he was able to convert from a difficult position. Odd to have a senior who's been kicking this for years and change it. But you know, I guess. Yeah, right? But you used to be kicking all year, right? So the restart from Rio Inkyo goes deep. Winton takes cleanly the try score and places back. Big Green set a platform as Engelhart will look to find Sheehy. Kick is blocked though. Oh, and a clear knock on from the Cornell fly half, uh, Otto Godwin. Um, definitely not as clean of a uh, exit opportunity though for the Green as Cornell was able to put a hand to ball there. It's the first time that Cornell has been. Yeah, so the, this is almost certainly the first time Cornell has really had any sort of possession, or not even possession, but just, you know, phase play, or not, not sorry, not phase play either, any sort of gameplay inside uh, Dartmouth's end, let alone inside their own 22. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Dartmouth responds to the, a little bit of territorial pressure here. Okay, so why is she working for the NFL? That's even so she, she he is straight behind, looking like he's going to try and kick left to his right. As Aldridge takes, breaks a tackle, breaks another one. And why kick when you can run? And they ship it to Worky, who can make people miss. Here goes Driscoll, finds Johnson. Johnson, an aggressive runner. Not releasing the tackler, the advantage will be played to the green. Here comes Sheehy, finds Aldridge, one more pass, finds Goodmanson. What a great series of uh, phases from the green. Sheehy, finds Hannum, finds Gol Coleman, Coleman can go himself and he does. He makes a man miss and will center the ball. And it's try time for the green, under the posts. It's Coleman's second of the day. And again, it really begs the question, with a team like this, <laughs> you can really throw some time-tested stratagems out the window when you can make line breaks at will. So... What's that? Oh. Your audio is being received well. Is it? Yes. That's Sorry, good. what is the question? Yeah. Your water is coming off so she he will take the conversion as we try and navigate some sort of um, water difficulties 
as despite what you might be seeing on the on the video screen, it is in fact raining here in Hanover. She puts it up and it's good. So four converted tries for the DRC within the first 25 minutes. Uh, head coach Gavin Hickey must be extremely pleased with the way they're playing, you know, particularly with the the conditions as they are. Um, you know, phase play has looked great. Handling errors have been at a minimum. They've really kind of settled into this game despite uh, you know a little bit of a broken back and forth uh, opening to this game. So. Cornell will look to reset. Rio Inkyo, the fullback, will take the restart. As the green sets. And they go deep. They go straight to Badenhaut, ba Badhausen? Bad. Badhausen. Who finds deep. Green exit their zone, and now there's a counterattack from Cornell. Does not go very far, but a referee awards a penalty from not releasing. A great take from the big green. Johnson is ready, though. <laughs> he is almost certainly... Every time there's a kicking opportunity, I can assure you that man will be looking for a chip straight to him so he can go to try timesville But nonetheless, the big green play, a, play it conservatively and correctly and will take an attacking line out just outside. Uh, they're attacking 22. So they will go with a short line out, or uh, understaffed line out, I should say, with Hayden Aldridge finding scrum half Engelhart, who finds Fuller Winton, who really makes a good press there. They have numbers to the left. They just have to ship it. One more. Ald oh. Surprised that the referee hasn't, <laughs> hasn't awarded a knock on there, but play continues. And the wet conditions are manifesting themselves here as the ball slips out of Sheehy's hands. They'll go blind again with Winton finding Beanstalk. Here they come. Parker is up almost parallel now. No real concern about a counterattack from Cornell here. As Aldridge goes into contact, that's not Aldridge. What is it? Fuller. Fuller. Fuller goes into contact. Finds Badenhausen. Bad how bad. Bad looks too. But Jack Bad. We'll call him Jack Bad. <laughs> Getting a lot of grief for this one name. <laughs> Jack Bad will be our outside or inside center for the rest of the day. So good work here to, to secure the ruck. A lot of lot of contesting going on. Yes. Referee seems fine to let it play on though. And so um, the madhouse at this ruck ensues. Cornell is very tight over the ball as Goodmanson takes it into contact. They'll reset. Tries to find Beanstalk wide by himself, but unfortunately that didn't seem like the correct decision as it'll be a knock on. They did. Cold, 28 minutes gone by. DRC leads Cornell 28 to 0. A pretty dominant performance um, from the men in green. Uh, most of the most of the game has been played either you know, inside Cornell's attack, uh, Cornell's 22, or even just outside inside the you know 10 meter line on the uh, in the Cornell direction. But nonetheless, Cornell has the ball here. It'll be a scrum to Cornell. <laughs> As they'll look to exit the zone. It's a good defensive scrum by, scrum by the green. The referee blows it dead though and says that the ball, that, that the scrum was not fully formed. So it'll be reset here. <laughs> Word for 
Historically, the Green have always been, you know, an undersized team. But against Ivy League opponents, um, particularly in recent years, their their scrum has really become an attacking weapon um, and also a defensive weapon too, in the sense that they're able to exert their technique, their size, and their skill over uh, other opponents. But that hasn't really been a hallmark of of you know, Dartmouth Big Green rugby. Um, you know, typically, people have you know, always lauded the uh, champagne rugby aspect, um, you know, AD party type of uh, of attacking options. But it's very impressive to see what they're doing, both on you know stability from an attacking you know, on attacking scrums, and the way they're able to contest a lot of defensive scrums as well. As the ball comes out, Cornell will look to try and run it here, despite their dis uh, disadvantage in the territorial aspect. But they, they work it well, as here comes the fullback in Yuyo, and a great tackle from Parker, who sticks him right there. As Engelhart looks to go over, but that that's a the rare scrum half poach. Not roll was that rolling away? <laughs> curious call. Um, the man didn't release though. Engelhart with a great a great cheeky late scrum half entry poach there. And so a man is down, injured on the field. That is uh <laughs> is that is that Vincent? No, it's not no. So fly, the fly half number 10, Sheehy, is down on the field. He is grabbing his left leg. <laughs> Looks like he'll be able to continue, though. Either a cramp or some sort of knock. Yeah, he's a big dude. <laughs> so it'll be a penalty for the green. Um, who's who's kicking this? Jack Bad. Jack Bad is will look to find touch and hits a knuckler out of bounds. Almost hits a dog, which would have really not endeared him to the crowd here. Um, so it'll be a green line out just on the 22. Uh, Gordon Driscoll will throw in. Again, the green showing this four-man reduced lineout has worked pretty effectively almost all game. As they go, Eldridge back tower. Driscoll takes himself, goes centrally, can't be brought down. Oh, that is just sheer force of will from Gordon Driscoll, the hooker, coming around off the lineout, off the top. Man tried to play the pass. He should have played the man as Gordon Driscoll goes and finds try territory. A, it's, basic, it's a basic physics experiment. Force is a mass and acceleration type concept. Gordon has the mass and apparently has the acceleration as well. So it'll be try time for the big green as it is 33 to nil. And I, I should clarify, the mass is a good mass. <laughs> hours, li hours in the gym. <laughs> Hours in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> in the library and in the gym, accumulating forward mass. Uh, <laughs> a lot of, lot of corrections I have to make in the booth here. Driscoll with a very impressive try. Quick of feet. And so Worky, a little confusing what the green are doing here. Really switching up the conversions. Um, Nate was right behind him with Dark. Work, he slots it up and through. That's five converted tries for the Big Green. The kicking game has been superlative today, despite the fact that they seem to be rotating it between players. I wish I wish we did a little more rotation back in the day, given that I did not personally get that many opportunities to uh, to kick, <laughs> kick for points. But nonetheless, it's 35 nothing. 32 minutes gone by. Dartmouth is looking very, very strong. You are. Yeah, well, Both in part to you know their great phase play, their sound strategy, and the t the kicking game. I mean, you can't really understate that. You know, five tries 
points all converted. That's 10 points. So a real credit to both Worky and uh, to Pat Sheehy, who was also kicking from the left side of the field as Cornell takes the restart. <laughs> Aldridge takes very well despite a little bit of a shank from the uh, from the Cornell fullback. There's the green will look to run here. Or will they? Sheehy will look to go blind but doesn't get very far. Fullback will take and now they have numbers if he passes but he doesn't. Oh, now he does. Oh, but he knocks it on. A <laughs> little bit of a wet weather type day makes every attacking opportunity a little bit precarious. You know, I thought the uh, U.S. acquitted themselves well. I'd love to watch it for the So it'll be a scrum to Dartmouth just at mid, a little over midfield in their defensive zone, but not a place that they'll almost certainly seek to attack from. All the backs are lined up left as Engelhart will look to put in. Goodmanson and Greco are the props. Griskel is the hooker, the try scorer. But Johnson will look to come blind. They'll pop it straight back. Engelhart finds Sheehy. Finds Bad. Finds Worky. Beanstalk. Beanstalk keeps going. Aggressive run from Beanstalk. They'll set a platform. They'll look to go back to their right here. Sheehy. Driscoll. Oh boy. Worky. Goes wide again. Aldridge. Oh. Big Green make anybody anybody hurt that wants to tackle them. And even though they're close to the out of the even though they're close to the out of bounds line, the touch line. They they are brought back here. Never mind. The referee blows it dead. A player who is touching the ball, his foot was in touch. He's lecturing one of the amateur touch judges on how they should call the game. It's really disgraceful that at this this level of rugby we have such amateurish touch judges who are being dragged out here to <laughs> to to wave their flags around. So it'll be a Cornell line out on their 22. Uh, it's unclear from up here if the referee has indicated whether or not it's inside or outside, but almost certainly Cornell will look to exit as opposed to counterattack. 35 minutes gone by. The score is also corresponding 35 to nothing. As the Big Green set a front tower, Cornell decides to go back. Well executed. They'll find their fly half. Uh, Otto Goodwin, and they'll kick, but it doesn't find touch. And Driscoll, the danger man, the man who Newtonian physics seems to not apply, finds Worky, who finds... Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> looked for Luke Beanstock. And unfortunately, it was a forward pass, so it'll be a scrum down to Cornell as the rain intensifies here at Corey Ford Rugby Clubhouse on Brophy Field. Nonetheless, it is a beautiful homecoming weekend, a consistent homecoming weekend with what you may remember. Um, skies overcast. There's a lovely little mist uh, accumulating in the, the pine trees and uh, assorted foliage. To the bro the left side of Brophy Field, as Cornell puts a scrum in, but it looks like this will be a certain turnover, and it'll be a penalty to the green. They'll almost look to go quick here for sure, as. Aldridge? Aldridge. Aldridge Aldridge takes it into contact. Big Green are really threatening here. Ball comes loose though. Cornell recovers. No, able to escape the danger almost only momentarily though. As they get a good drive, Engelhart finally drags him down. Ball squirts loose again. Great dive. Yeah. Another penalty, though. I'm not really sure what... He says he's lo lost his feet, but the ball looked like it was pretty loose. So, uh, I respectfully would disagree from up here. But nonetheless, it's not my decision to make. Um, as Cornell will have a penalty, he'll look to find touch. It will... Oh. A question of footwork was almost NFL-like. Did he make the catch in bounds or not? And unfortunately, the catch was not, so it'll be a Cornell... Line out. They are able to find touch on the penalty. So it'll be a attacking or a line out for Cornell. Yeah, in their defensive zone. So I'll be curious to see if they actually decide to try and pin the green deep here, which has not really been successful today, as the green have been able to almost essentially run at will. But. 
Nonetheless, the lineout has also been a very good platform for Cornell. They found the back plat the back tower pretty effectively. So they'll look to go wide. They'll try and find the danger man, number 13, Eddie Hogan. He's brought down by Warkey. A living testament to the idea that size doesn't matter. As Will Newtson from Cornell takes it into contact, he finds oh, another. He finds a knock-on. <laughs> Effectively, he finds a knock-on. So it'll be a green scrum. 39 minutes gone by. There'll be basically one minute left to play in this half. Cream will look to capitalize here. I, you know what I don't remember? It's the tents. <laughs> I remember the weather. I don't remember the tents. Bear pump on the cage. <laughs> right. So almost certainly either one of the final plays of the half or the final play of the half. As the green will have a an attacking scrum. Johnson is trying to hide, pretending like he's a bench player, but he knows exactly what he's doing. As Aldridge takes it himself, gets great go forward, finds the ground just outside the 22. Johnson wants one thing and one thing only, just a kick forward, but he won't get it as they go blind to the forwards. A, a seemingly forward handoff there, but maybe, a, maybe I'm incorrect. Um, Engelhart finds Sheehy. Oh boy. Greco gets stuffed in contact. Really not his fault. Sheehy will look to kick forward. Oh, that's going to be a try. It's just a question of hands. Can you... Oh, and it's a question of hands. <laughs> if it's a wet day. It's a rainy day. It's pretty difficult to handle the ball. I'm glad I'm not doing it. I just get to talk into the microphone. Halftime here at Brophy Field. Score is Dartmouth Rugby Football Club 35. Cornell 0. We'll be back joining you again at the second half. I was speaking a little loud, wasn't I? Yeah. <laughs> The second row spots. <laughs> you don't require a whole lot of you know, understanding of the game. <laughs> um, uh, the Bruce Clark can do it. Yeah, we have got lots of precedent. <laughs> When we were, when we were, went on the Ireland tour, home. okay, we, we went to a castle. Okay, I, I think I played, so I stayed on the bus. Why you guys going to the castle? Okay, yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting there by the window. Huh? No, it was, it was another one. And I'm sitting there kind of on the side of the bus. And I'm looking out. I see this six, six five guy, red plaid kind of lumberjack coat. And the Irish flag starts coming down the pole. And I'm sitting on the bus looking. And our bus driver, he goes, oh my God, oh my God. He starts to get on the bus. And I go, I go, Dennis. I said, I get up and go, friend. I'll take care of this. So I go inside. And Bruce is coming down like this, you know, with his lumberjack coat. I go, I said, Bruce. I said, uh, I'm not saying you did anything. But if that flag isn't back up there in five minutes, you're going home. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was like, you <laughs> thought he'd take a little Irish or mental home. Poor <laughs> kid did that in North Korea. He's doing Oh, I know. Hard time. Yeah. yeah. Hard time in North Korea. Attempt to well, pass it off. But. <laughs> well, he, like, you know, yeah. do you ever think back on some of the stuff? Oh, uh, sure. Like, scares the shit out of kind of lucky, huh? Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't know all that happened in those nights. I wasn't there half the time. It's freezing. It's so cold. Oh, no. Everybody does that. You guys get snow? Look at all my sad toes. Get snow in your... You know, <laughs> major storms seem to miss us though, because of the winds, right? So we don't get as much as they do. How often are you up here? <laughs> Two times this fall. It's terrible. It's only up. My father's and he was living alone in Kenny Bunk and he just went down with my sister all this morning. It's tough. <laughs> St. Andrews, and I said, no, we played on my father's house. I said, I got the cap, and the girls got all the jewelry. <laughs> But we did, yeah. We, we moved everything out, you know. We were, you know, we've been gone. We've been alone. I go there. I'm taking a toilet. Oh, there's a gap. Yeah, yeah move like, the tailgate the in. Toilet bowl kind of <laughs> wrapped up on your wall. Shit. Turn out of it. So, yeah. 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 Yeah.
as Cornell will get the ball. Maybe one of the first times they've had in their attacking zone. Green pounce on the first guy, but they don't bring him down. Ethan Venoza, the hooker, will take it forward. So Cornell will look to enjoy one of their rare tagging opportunities, but brought down behind the line by Jack Bad, and it's a penalty to the green. <laughs> and there is a green player down on the field. Looks like Jack Bad, if I'm not mistaken. Now it is certainly Jack Bad. <laughs> and so there will be a, a, a little bit of a timeout. Both wingers employing different sort of resting. <laughs> I have no ways to ways to take this time out. Uh, Beanstalk looking to go with a nice yoga pose. <laughs> Whereas Julian Johnson is just still not happy that he hasn't received a forward kick and gone to Tritown yet. But Jack Bad will come off the field. And so number 20, John Brady. Johnny B, as they're calling him on the sideline, will come into the game. Um, Jack Bad looks... A little looks like it's unclear if it's a concussion or if it's some sort of of leg injury. Um, almost certainly concussion. Is Ben the trainer Ben Schuler, one of the best in the game, best in the business for sure. Uh, trying to figure out his current state, so we'll keep you updated on that. But Green will take it. They don't find touch on the penalty, but Cornell does not look particularly well put together on any sort of hand in, or ball in hand type play as Green take over with Hanum takes it into contact Engelhart will look to set to the right find Sheehy oh no a great handling by by Coleman though as they'll continue to go right Borky though no stranger to having the ball in hand will, will set up to the left now he slots in back behind as the pullback option oh they love this kick so a little kick forward oh boy oh no must think that that is almost certainly a knock-on. Straight off the chest, as bad as the hands. Effectively the same penalty as throwing the ball 50 yards downfield overhand. So it'll be a scrum to the green in their attacking 22. A platform from which they've had a fair amount of success. I was told that just, you know, the mic is live, so anything that you guys are talking about, they can... <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> so it'll be described to the big green. Max Parker slots to the left. Unlikely, unlikely blindside opportunity here. They'll go right. Aldridge. Finds, finds Beanstalk. Literally f almost could have fallen through a hole as big as <laughs> oh, there's no real good metaphor I can make here that would go over well so big green try it'll be 40 to nothing pending the conversion straight under the post as Sheehy will take a drop goal he doesn't really seem to care about the tee and he slots it up and through child's play at this point trying to accumulate as many points as possible so the score is 42 to nothing. Three minutes gone by in the second half here. Big Green with a commanding advantage. And some of the substitutes are looking anxious and eager to make their way onto the field. I'm sure that will be in short order. Again, the the I don't really know what Driscoll is doing aside from in the NFL that'd be a 15-yard penalty. Aldrich takes well, st manages to stay in bounds, finds Goodmanson who takes it into contact as the green center platform. Very impressive take from Aldridge there. As Engelhart, oh yep. Yeah, he is he knows exactly what he's doing and he will run, he'll find Hannum. Oh, uh, but unfortunately the second pass wasn't there, but Max Parker's a very fast. He's another cheeky fast ginger. Oh, uh, but Johnson, whoa yeah, no, that's 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 just not going to. That's almost get up, get up, get up. Yep, yeah, that'll be a try. <laughs> Johnson with almost no regard for the feelings of the other team. 
bursts through several tackles and is able to ultimately, on uh, second effort, find pay dirt if there were pay in amateur rugby. But nonetheless, try time for the Big Green. 47 to nothing, five minutes gone by. Worky will take the conversion here. Again, still confused as to what this sort of alternating kicker structure is. I wish that was employed back in the day as the third string kicker. You know, you could maybe get another guy into it. You know, get you know, get some points when he wasn't scoring tries. But nonetheless, 47 nothing. five minutes gone by. And Worky will look to convert from just on the right 15 meter mark. Here we go, Hado. Let's go, kid. Hey, Plowman. <laughs> Lone Soul tries to charge, but it's not even worth it. Oh, no, it's no good. Was it good? Uh, no, no good. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when your depth perception isn't what it ever was or used to be. So 47 to nothing, five minutes gone by. Cornell will restart again from the boot of fullback Rio Inkyo. They'll kick to their right. Quick points, Big Green have to be happy with this. Coach Gavin Hickey, assistant coach and new father, James Willicks, must be very enthused to hear about this result. Oh, that kick is not going 10. They take it, and so it'll be a scrum center to the Big Green, different to the rule in sevens where a non 10 meter restart ultimately ends up as a free kick for the other team. Uh, in 15s, it actually is a scrum center. But this presents a dangerous opportunity for the green as they're able to line up and create a lot of, basically draw a lot of the Cornell defenders to one side by lining their backs up one way while keeping clear danger man and apparently slippery Julian Johnson to the right isolated by himself. And Hayden Aldridge, Max Parker tandem seems like the adequate infrastructure to get him the ball. So that definitely seems advantageous and the Cornell clearly knows where the ball is going. They're just not able to commit men that way given the way the green are lined up. So they'll reset. Reset. Reset the scrum here. Englehart puts in, uh, and they're going right. Yep. Who knew? Parker will run. He's fast. He finds Johnson. That's a lot of space. He clearly can run. Uh, unfortunately, the second offload doesn't work. But the ref is bringing it back. Is there some sort of advantage that he's playing? Is it a? It's a penalty. Unclear what form might have been uh, a high tackle. High tackle? Looks like a high tackle. I don't know where. I, I, I didn't see that, but uh, looks like they'll try to find Teletra. Off the boot of Engelhardt. Again, the kicking here, I mean, it, it's got to be great to have, you know, four people who can kick, you know, for points, for territory. I always thought it was better to have one person. Well, actually, no, I take that back. I, I thought it was better to have a committee of people, and I never got that opportunity, so... <laughs> um, Regardless, we have a green attacking line out. Just outside, they're attacking 22. Driscoll will throw in again with the four man reduced line out. Uh, number six, Fuller Winton off the back. Look for him to be a danger here as a crash. Yes, he gets the ball, takes it into contact. Not necessarily the greatest ruck, but they clean it up as Sheehy will find Driscoll. Takes several men to bring him down. Englehart will go to his right. Worky will now take the first receive position. Finds Prop Goodmanson. Takes it into contact. Englehart will look to bounce again. No, he won't. He'll take it. Oh, that's a little bit of high, but no, he doesn't go down quite as easily as Cornell would have liked him to. Rolls forward. Able to main po maintain possession. Worky will now distribute. Oh, there's almost certainly a kick here. Kick is on. Three on one. Who's going to take it? Oh, that's got to be a knock. Unfortunately, even despite the three on one, a kick is never nearly as certain as ball in hand as Struan Coleman knocks it forward after 
unfortunately getting hit in the contact point. So it'll be a scrum to Cornell. Uh, yeah, she's well not here with me. She wouldn't do the rugby thing. She's at the <laughs> like, you know, you know Pete. Yeah, I know Pete. Well, thank you so good to see you guys. This is what I'm missing about being on the East Coast. That kind of sucks. Oh, that was left over from the tent. So, scrum to Cornell. Um, well, you know, 82s are doing a, some kind Max of Parker is lined up some a little to the right here, anticipating a kick. Oh, no, the, also the uh, winger, Luke Beanstalk, is on the line here. Be curious to see how well they exit. And they don't. Beanstalk finds Parker. Warkey is back with him. If they move it, they have. Oh, Johnson is really. Oh, no. He doesn't want that. Does well, though, to maintain possession there. Takes it into contact. Sets a platform. Cornell really needs to roll away there. I'm not sure how that. What do you do? She, he tries to take a step. Fails, but doesn't. Able to get the offload. Here comes Driscoll. Driscoll should just take it himself. Oh, wow. That is champagne rugby from the hooker. One more will do it. Oh, but to get in, that's fine. Safe play taking into contact. Englehart will look to distribute to his right. Sheehy finds Driscoll. Driscoll makes one man miss, but then brought down by the second. Again, Englehart surveying his options. We'll go right to Warkey. Not the right play, but they'll find the corner. Johnson will run back. And the fullback from Cornell wisely marks. Rio Inkyo, the man who takes the restarts. Smart to mark it, as he was almost certainly outnumbered back in the zone there. So he has a free kick to look upfield and finds touch. Not a territor, uh, not a terribly territorial kick, but nonetheless able to escape the immediate pressure. Eleven minutes gone by in the second half. DRC leads 47 to nothing. Commanding lead has to be very comfortable here on this homecoming weekend in Hanover, New Hampshire. Um, again, we're probably two weeks after peak foliage, so not quite, you know, depending on what you're looking for, not necessarily the, you know, the uh, Indian summer you're looking for, but nonetheless, who can complain about being up here? responsible for everything in that project. That's sweet. That's Green will go with the four-man lineup. They'll find Aldridge in the back tower. Does well to take it low. I'm just glad I'm not there. Oh my God. Finds Hinshaw, who runs aggressively. Makes great line break. He's still on his feet. Driving his legs. He's going to go. He's going to score. No. Just brought down right shy of the try line. Unclear who has the ball here. Ball looks out. Referee looks like he's confused as, as much as I am. Green is able to tap it back. Driscoll. Oh. <laughs> Coach Coach Hickey yells. <laughs> he's got to stop doing that. <laughs> Which is, I think, a probably a fair assessment of a hooker trying to... Uh, Hooker trying to throw underhand or, uh, you know, blind passes, but um, nonetheless, it is somewhat of a mall. The referee is, oh yeah, the referee is saying held up in the contact point, so Cornell will take the scrum. So some of the big green reserves are starting to take off their jackets and get loose as number 18, Pete, Pete Bad, the brother of <laughs> the, the uh, aforementioned brother of Jack Bad, is about to enter the game at flanker. So, Jack Bad, who came off with a, a, a apparent concussion or some sort of head injury, um, the the Bad Badenhausen family though will be represented, nonetheless, on the fields again by by Pete. Speak <laughs> yourself. I like my I like my W <laughs> And so, Cornell will put the ball in deep in their own zone. And Pete Pat's first action right into the contact as he takes down the streaking eight man. Turned over by the green though. It looks like flanker uh, Luke Beanstalk was able to turn it over. Advantage being played to the green. Let's see if Ollie can go. Oh man, there's a lot of people in a, in a very small space, which means there's got to be some space to the other side. Just distribute it. Yep. Aldridge gets taken in. 
<laughs> takes the ball and still advantage being played. Green looking to really just put the nail into the coffin, take the drop goal. Oh, or he's going to kick it, and that's going to be marked. Oh, oh, Johnson, yeah, Johnson. Oh, I was surprised that you didn't get in there. Um, they're right on the one meter line. Just got to ship it. Warky's just got him. Oh, no. Catch it, though, too. Again, wet. remind our viewers that it is deceptively <laughs> wet here. Uh, very hard to do basic catch pass. So any sort of um, any sort of uh, catch pass is is going to be pretty difficult in these type of conditions. So it'll be a scrum to Cornell. Unclear as to why the referee ceased to play advantage despite the green only advancing the ball about two meters, but nonetheless. That's that's actually what it's been several times. <laughs> Who can exaggerate more about <laughs> <laughs> so Cornell is able to retain possession as they kick and escape their zone, but they keep it in bounds. Johnson keeps it in bounds. Oh, but he knocks it on almost. Exactly. Oh, so clever. He did a good job and then was just thinking about two phases down the road as opposed to the one, the one he wanted, which was to pick it up and score. He did get his kick though, that's for sure. Johnson was has been has been wanting that kick across. Uh, but unfortunately, didn't quite result in exactly what he wanted. So, so the Green are kind of changing positions here. Warkey is going out to the wing. And Beanstalk is pinching into the defensive wall here on the Cornell scrum just at outside of midfield, inside of midfield. <laughs> Cornell's able to get it back. The eight man, uh, John Schuler, brings it into contact. And we had the, the, the guy who was And so they'll run conservative plays, but offsides called in the green. They'll have to drop back 10 as Cornell will now have a penalty and the ability to set up an attacking position. Position, one of their uh, few times throughout the game. And they'll take it quick though, as their faith in the line out is, or their kicker is not great, and it works out probably even better. Still advantage, advantage being played to Cornell. Unclear what for yet. Oh, my God, that you're right. The second year, the first. Event is still being played. That's another penalty. It'll come back. The referee will bring it back for <laughs> for referee's discretion. Uh, it's unclear what that penalty was for. Everyone's on sides as Cornell looks to pop it to the forward pack to the left side. Ball brought down. Probably the best series of attacking phases that Cornell has had this entire game. Although the distribution is a little tough, and the big green are able to force them back several meters, although they are able to spring the ball loose. Ball comes out. Ball goes backwards. Max Parker. Oh, it makes one man miss. Oh, this is going to be... If he gets the yeah, at, that's that's enough. Yeah, he, he can make men miss. He's a cheeky... The name of the game is Cheeky Ginger. And there's another one. Ollie Engelhart. Oh, man. So much cheek. <laughs> so many recessive traits, <laughs> recessive genes. <laughs> As number five, Struan Coleman takes it into contact. Engelhardt is wondering why this man won't release. Goes inside. Oh, wow, that is... It's like a basketball type give and go as Engelhart picks and goes, finds Johnson on the, on his other side now. That's Max Parker, who is clearly not a man who likes to get his jersey wet. <laughs> Puts it back, finds Sheehy, who finds Driscoll, who finds Grego. Over the ball, Engelhart doing well to manage this game. It's Coleman. Goes, oh no. Wow, that that was 
and you know. Yeah, that that's not. Exactly. <laughs> that's one of those passes where <laughs> you're uh, you're trying to make too much happen. Um, fortunately, it looks like there was some sort of uh, knock on in the ruck, and so it'll be a green scrum uh, in their right outside their attacking zone. Um, almost certainly the lineup backs left. They'll put Johnson, the danger man, to the right. Well, not to say that that Beanstalk isn't the danger man either, but you know, it's just the way the the scrum half lines up. I mean, there is just a ton. There are acres of space, and that is the name of the game. So Engelhart will look to put in here. Beanstalk and Johnson are lined up to the right. Aldridge will take out the back. A lot of fast ma Oh, no. Aldridge loses forward. Again, reminding our viewers that it is, in fact, a very wet day here in Hanover. And so things that might seem physically incredible, you know, that's just the nature. The nature of playing with a wet ball, a heavy ball. Thing, you know, things you might take for granted, like just, you know, holding on to the rock uh, aren't necessarily, you know, a, a given that, you know, a, a dry day, you know, with more pristine conditions would, uh, would lead you to believe. So Cornell gets the scrum. They'll go straight back. They'll look to run it out of here. They might as well. They're down 47 points. 20 minutes gone by in the second half for three quarters of the way home. Ball comes out. They kick it. And Worky, who's been playing a pseudo winger, will take it in the air. Makes Oh, yep. Yeah, he's a tough man to tackle. Just so little of him to, to grab onto. And, you know, it's it's like trying to grab, like, smoke. As Sheehy goes wide. Oh, finds Hinshaw, who is running vertically running hard and really just doesn't isn't concerned about people's feelings or anything of the like it's try time Stephen Hinshaw and the score will now be 52 to nothing uh, Dartmouth over Cornell 22 minutes gone by in the second half and so the kicking by committee looks like it will continue as say hi to Sue for me Oh, are you going to be around anymore? Uh, this weekend? Uh, who's kicking? I'm shrubbing the bar. Sheehy. Sheehy is kicking again. That's a rumor. So, Cornell players down on the field. Uh, number 11, Dan Kaplan. So, in the meantime, we will wait. Um, actually, we'll wait for a T. Apparently, uh, Sheehy isn't so gung-ho about kicking. Um, when it, oh, thought it was getting tapped, it's a little doggy. Hello, Duke. Hello, Duke. Hello. Uh, so she, he will take the conversion, lines up. Pretty regimented and robotic approach, but... <laughs> but nonetheless effective as he slots it through the posts and it will be 52 to uh, 54 now, right? 54 nothing, big green over big red. Uh, no, he is studying and then heading to the soccer game. Oh, okay. It's a question of which color is bigger. And the green, the color green is certainly making its case today. So I think there are a couple subs on, if I'm not mistaken. No, I'm not. I, I am mistaken. Never mind. <laughs> Side is pretty much consistent aside from the substitution out of Jack Bad, the insertion to the game of Pete Bad, and John Brady, who has also come on. 
So restart, making sure the ground is terra firma. And, well, it doesn't matter anyway. It's a little bit of a squib kick. Aldridge takes well. Great, great restart coverage. That was a weird forward pass there, but referee could not see it from that angle. So we'll let him, we'll let him slide with that one. Engelhart will look to go straight from the base of the ruck. And this is a tough one to deal with. Fullback takes nowhere to go, though, if the tackling is good. And it is, but nonetheless able to make a couple spaces. But the counter ruck is is superlative as the green takes. Aldridge picks up. Will take himself. Oh, yep. Does. Oh, that is certainly offsides. And the referee sees it as well. That'll be advantage. Hinshaw finds uh, Beanstock. Beanstock. <laughs> who also refuses to be brought down. Real impressive leg drive from the big green here. It's almost like they had a you know password to a bunch of files that you know was something like along that along those lines. Um, oh but it's number 18 uh, Pete Bad looking to join his brother in the uh, Tri Time Club, not in the uh, injured reserve club, but Worky is coming out of the backfield. This is dangerous. Oh boy. They have to set up here quick on defense though. This is a dangerous attack. Oh. So, despite the the uh, apparent nature of that attack, <laughs> the threatening nature, the potential to turn it into you know a real uh, fruitful endeavor. Uh, unfortunately, the Big Green are not able to keep. Uh, keep the ball in hand without knocking it forward, um, and so it'll be a scrum to Cornell um, in their defensive zone. So they set, scrum half puts in. That's on tape. So Cornell is able to uh, exit the zone. So it'll be a Line out to to Cornell. There must have been a penalty I missed. Oh, it's turning away. Uh, Luke Beanstalk comes off the field. Um, he'll be replaced by number 23, Jesse Jess Jess Jesse Brown. Jesse Brown. Jesse Brown. So he'll come in at the wing. It's a real a real top life being a, being a reserve winger, a side reserve winger. That's how you avoid pneumonia and any sort of injury while maximizing your potential for uh, for point scoring. Uh, ball pops loose here. Oh boy. Rock has gotten really slippery. It's unclear who knocked it, but it looks like Ref is playing advantage to Cornell. And they'll look to move it to their right as they'll go forward pod, but the tackling is just superb. Stephen Hinshaw really. Stephen Hinshaw and um, uh, Pete Bad really <laughs> tag teaming the bejesus out of that guy uh, to the extent that the ref no longer uh, thought any advantage was had by Cornell. So it'll be blown dead and there will be a scrum. Yeah. Scrum down to Cornell playing off the knock on from earlier. Um, and so it looks like Worky is now sliding it back into outside center with uh, substitute Jesse Brown playing wing again. Uh, back three <laughs> is now back to its original uh, state as it was earlier in the game. Um, so we'll see how they how they line up defensively here. Jesse Brown playing straight up on the line. Um, and Cornell will put the ball in. It'll come straight back. Eightman will take the ball out, but trying to cut it back. Gain some yardage, but... Oh, but a great poach. 
a great poach by Ali Engelhart, despite getting a little roughed up by the uh, uh, guy on Cornell after the fact who thought he was somehow in the right there, but you know, <laughs> clearly the tackled player has to release and release he did not. A fantastic kick for territory though by Engelhart after the poach. Really good sequence from him there. So it'll be a big green line out just outside their 22. Or their, sorry, uh, they're attacking 22. And I'm sure while 54 point cushion is is ample, uh, it will almost certainly not be sufficient uh, in their mind, at least it's the way they approach the last 11 minutes of the game. Apologies for saying almost certainly again. Um, so here comes Hinshaw running through the middle. Doesn't really matter how many people are around him. He will almost certainly get yardage unless he's able to be held up in contact. Ball looks like it was stolen. Really unclear what's going on here. The house of cards built, but it comes out to the green. Um, Warky takes is brought down. And so they'll set up the look to go right. Engelhart finds Sheehy. Another kick. Lots of kicks. Oh, Johnson is keen for this one. If he can get there. Oh, unfortunate. Just a knock on. It was definitely the type of opportunity that they that Johnson has been uh, emphatic for all game. He's been waiting and waiting. Um, but, you know, it is a difficult maneuver to execute. It requires not only a delicate touch, but also the ability to bring down cleanly and apply solid pressure. So Sheehy, the fly half, comes out of the game, is replaced by number 21, Andrew Robinson, who is a sophomore. And so we'll see how the big green line up here. Um, it appears that... Robinson will take take over at the scrum half position while Engelhart will go to center. Warkey will come in at fly half, at least defensively for now. We'll see actually how they line up uh, on the attacking uh, side of the field, or uh, the side of the, the play. So Cornell puts in, ball comes back, we'll try and kick out at uh, center of the field. That is not where they want to go. Johnson is ready. He'll find Parker. Parker again has a lot of space. Finds the new man, 23, Jesse Brown. Jesse Brown who gets wrapped up into contact, but they make get quick ball. Engelhart takes it into contact. Ball is a little messy here. So trying to figure it out. No one is really sure what's going on. Just a, lots of people running into each other. And now a little bit of structure re, re, uh, rejoins the game. Uh, penalty to the big green for not, or penalty against the big green, sorry, for not rolling away. Which only makes sense as there hasn't really been much structure to the last two minutes or so. But the penalty doesn't get very far as uh, Aldridge takes it, finds Parker, and there is just acres of space. Except he's running sideways, finds Worky. Worky should kick it, but he oh, but he oh man. It's like a Dancing with the Stars type maneuver there. Oh boy. Uh, uh, that's tough. Um, a couple good steps from Warkey don't really bear much fruit as, unfortunately, Jesse Brown not able to corral the pass. Um, so it'll be a knock on. And Cornell will get the put in. Good push from the green. Oh boy. No one was guarding the blind. But the man's behind, the man by himself. 
Ball is out. Aldridge does well to take it over. Oh, that is that is certainly a penalty. Oh, I shouldn't yell. Um, but anyway, ball comes out. Driscoll finds uh, funds prop Krieg Greco, who is just clearly a man on a mission. I'm really confused as to why he's a prop. I'm not confused, but he is. Um, he'd like to run forward. But it's a penalty nonetheless. Uh, I guess leaving their feet. So it'll be a penalty to Cornell. Creed Greco wondering why he can't just run with the ball instead of, you know, run into people or push into people. Another missed touch opportunity by Cornell. Finds Max Parker, who will find Jesse Brown, who should find Dawit because that man knows how to pass. Uh, but that's a forward pass. Yeah. It's tough. It happens, but it is the nature of the game. Um, so there are 34 minutes gone by. DRC leads 54 to nothing over Cornell. Um, weather conditions, if anything, have worsened throughout the game. It is certainly wet. The only at advantage that either team has here is that if they want to showboat and slide while they score a try, it's slightly easier. But catch pass and basic fundamentals are significantly more difficult to execute in these type of conditions. So Cornell puts the ball and ball comes out. Flanker picks it up. Comes back. Green looked to counter ruck, but there's a penalty clearly from the side. That's a winger trying to get in a ruck. That's what you can expect. Yep, yeah, from the side or you know, some basically the holy trinity of uh, <laughs> from the side losing his feet and hands in. Might as well. <laughs> So Cornell enjoying some rare uh, attacking possession, but they knock it on. And so it'll be a counterattack. Here comes Johnson. Johnson wishing there were not as many people in front of him, but nonetheless, bravely takes it into contact. And so they'll look to, oh boy, what happened? Someone took it. So it's Cornell ball. They're making refs making sure Big Green is on sides, and they will basically just run it into an immobile wall. It's clear that the unstoppable force here is not present, but that is a chest knock. Oh boy, some sloppy play here. Is it's really un unclear who has possession, <laughs> who who is attacking, who is defending, and how much time is left in the game. <laughs> I think both teams would very much like to be dry inside and warm which thankfully the broadcasting uh, team here is at least not inside but certainly comfortable under a, a nice tent <laughs> So a man down for Cornell on the field. Um, the clock is still running on the field, but I'm not sure why the people are yelling at the scoreboard operators to stop the clock, because as most people know, the referee is the singular uh, officiant of when time expires and when it doesn't. But nonetheless, the clock stops on the field, reads 36.40 in the second half, putting the cumulative game total at 76 minutes in 40 seconds <laughs> with the score still at 54 to nothing a lot of broken play recently Ben Schuler really the mother Teresa of of trainers as he is helping the Cornell player off the field with what looks to be either a broken arm or collarbone or some sort of arm injury um, but you know obviously the training staff here second to none come on green push so ball comes out, Cornell will have an attacking, oh, they'll kick? That's interesting. Max Parker will take, and Max Parker is a fast man, and he's elusive, and he can accelerate 
and he can gain yards, but it's a question of whether or not people can support. Nice winger ruck, but somehow the referee has bailed them out for, for uh, I don't even, I'm a certified referee and I don't even know what that arm motion is, but the green will get it, a penalty midfield, they'll look to take it deep, Engelhart will try and kick, that's not going to find it though, barring, yeah, he caught it. Um, <laughs> he thought he was marking it. Oh, actually worked. Yeah, this game is really disintegrated. Quick line out. Uh, finds 21, who is uh, Andrew Robinson, the replacement for Engelhart. Oh, hey, Aldridge. Aldridge wants to go to try. Oh, no, but he didn't want to give it. <laughs> um, that he had. Oh, boy. But... Ooh, did he get downward pressure there? I don't think he did. But the referee, I think, is merciful. Unlike the weather, which is increasingly, increasingly less merciful. Um, and so there'll be a 22 dropout for Cornell. Um, uh, Drop kick comes up. Did he drop kick it? The referee's blowing it back. It looked like he just kind of <laughs> punted it, which uh, they're not really showing a lot of situational awareness here, unfortunately. Um, uh, so almost one minute left in the in the game. Um, we'll see if they actually drop kick it this time. Surprised that danger drop kick man Rio Inkyo isn't taking it, but Max Parker does. Finds Aldridge, who finds Warkey, who should go wide. He, oh. oh no, that's Aldridge. Who's the other guy? Uh, well, he stays in bounds. Um, Pretty impressive uh, ruck from the backs there. Definitely better back rucking than in my time, that's for sure. Um, um, so we've, we've been asked to uh, uh, opine on the man of the match um, for in, the, in the commentary booth here. Uh, you know, while, while there's still 30 seconds left in the game, I think without doubt it has to go to uh, Gordon Driscoll, um, you know, who's been a real workhorse all game. Um, oh boy, what happened? What happened? Oh, two Cornell guys just ran into each other and they do not, yeah, they, they are down in the field. Well, no one, no one wants to see that. At least they're in the care of the best in the business, Ben Schuler. So there will be a penalty for not releasing his work. He was unfortunately tackled in a manner that made it very difficult for him to place the ball back. And so it will be a Cornell penalty with 40 minutes ticked by on the clock. A very likely final whistle coming up after after this next play. Um, but as far as man of the match, you know, I think you know, while the Green have performed laudably almost in all facets of the game, um, you know, I, I think today's the kind of day where, you know, despite a historically champagne favoring side, um, I think it's got to be the hooker who had a not only a superlative try, but a great work rate around the contact point. Um, you know, a pretty, I think, 100% success on uh, line outs. Um, and, and so it's, I think it's very fair to give uh, the number two his due here. Um, so, man of the match, Gordon Driscoll. And as the big green improved to 6-0? 6-0? and 6-0 on the Ivy League season with one game left to play against... Ben against the University of Pennsylvania at yeah. uh, at home uh, next weekend? Two weeks. Two weeks <laughs> from, from now. So if you're in Hanover, New Hampshire, two weeks from now, be sure to stop by the Corey Ford Rugby Clubhouse um, where 
Dartmouth will take on the University of Pennsylvania. But make sure, though, even more than that, you stick around for some the women's rugby that I believe is following. But even more importantly, the men's B-side game where your, your humble announcer will be refereeing in this maelstrom of, of, of freezing rain. So, you know, pl- uh, please, please stick with me emotionally through that as I, I try not to get frostbite. Um, <laughs> so, Cornell opts to run it out. I believe the referee has indicated last play, so we'll await the final whistle here. But Dartmouth has put up a convincing 54 to nothing performance, even in a a cold, a damp, damp is an understatement, a wet environment. They'd definitely like to get more points here, but uh, I think they'll also be happy to be inside, which I think is probably the statement that most of the fans would agree with. But Dartmouth has the ball here. Arm comes out for a penalty. They'd like to close the game with the referee's arm straight up in the air to indicate try time. And it almost certainly will be if they can just run straight. Oh, you just have to take it yourself, but Max Parker will score. And it's try time for the Big Green. Max Parker just hands straight to the corner. That'll be definitely beneficial for their point differential as they look to go up by several, by three plus digits over the next competitor. At least, at least get an extra point on this one. 43 minutes gone by, they'll at least t- attempt the conversion. I'm surprised that they're still on the field because it is miserable AF outside. I can't believe that I am going to referee this next game. Um, I'm glad that you guys have, that our our loyal viewership base has stayed around to watch. Um, And I'm sure that most are disappointed they couldn't make it up to Hanover for a, once again, a lovely and enjoyable homecoming. Um, But... All in all, a fantastic performance from the green. A real, real workmanlike. You know, clear, clear that the the league dominance that has been such for the past ten years is is really not even close to diminishing. As Porky takes his final conversion. Oh, and happy homecoming straight through. Final score: sixty-one to zero. Dartmouth over Cornell Big Red. Again, our man of the match, Gordon Driscoll, the hooker, with a try. An all-around fantastic work rate. Um, so once again, happy homecoming um, for, for all those who couldn't uh, join in uh, in the festivities in Hanover, New Hampshire. Um, signing off for uh, Owen Scannell uh, and uh, I guess Quinn Connell, who is now the our... our our long missing color man um this has been dartmouth big green rugby on the big green rugby uh youtube network uh it has been a pleasure to uh talk with you this e- afternoon and uh happy homecoming to everyone bye bye